welcome back. Well, we're still here. It's still the morning brief. And this segment is something to make you laugh. I mean, you're at home chilling and we just want to make sure you put a smile on your face amidst all the challenges at the moment. So they say comedy, it just has a way of lightening up your mood. And that's all we're about to do right now. And to take us through that, we have Kofi. He'll say he's not D.A., the guru. He'll say he is Kofi, T-H-A. That's that guru. Well, Kofi, he's a comedian, actor, singer. Welcome. Thank you to so our much. Platform. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Triple threat. Triple threat. What's that? Three? <laughs> and that's what that's what my question is. Singer, What's the comedian, uh, actor. actor? It's even more than three. Producer. producer. I decided to just leave it at three. Three. He for just now. like the three. Because it's supposed to be a brief morning brief. Yeah. Morning <laughs> brief. Keep How is that connected keep to keep you? Brief. Brief. Keep it brief. <laughs> okay. Keep it brief. <laughs> Talking about keeping it brief. Just quickly you know tell us. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't <laughs> laugh. That's <laughs> so I don't. So all. Right, so out already, like, yeah. there's nothing to say here. Uh, Kofi, you're born to a Congolese, uh, Togolese mother. Yeah. I'd like to know what the background, your background was like. It was, okay. Not, not no. your background no, no, behind no. you, okay. Kofi. This is going to be a long your, interview. Oh, Let me just brace up. <laughs> okay, I, I presently live in Oniru, Victoria okay. Island. But exactly where I was born, it used to be a slum called Marocco. Mm. way back mm. so twist of fate right mm, yeah uh, sometimes when i move around the neighborhood i try to picture what used to be here what used to be here and i laugh anybody with me would not know why i was laughing so i grew up in Morocco and bariga so i'm a bariga breed mm. i'm a Morocco boy i i grew up in Ijebuibu, ibadan served in jaws and uh, so quite a humble beginning um, I didn't know we were poor, though, because my parents made the sacrifices. Yeah. Um, you know, I attended Kuramo Primary School, which is opposite the hotel. So I, I used to think we were uppity and all that. But it was when <coughs> reality <laughs> set in later that I knew that, okay, we didn't have a fridge. And I didn't see Nepal light until 1988. You're in Banzi. You were, no, band, band band non-existent. There you go. Because mm, where we were in Morocco, there was no Nepal. Oh. So I, I didn't watch the same cartoons you watched. Uh, okay, you, you are younger than he. I didn't watch the same <laughs> cartoons you watched uh, as a kid. Are you being ageist, right? <laughs> <laughs> He's just They're trying to tell us. Because he's 47, would you even believe he is? <laughs> okay. Uh, so growing up was quite good. Uh, I was disciplined a lot and... Um, I, I grew up, um, I was allowed to play and stray, but not go astray. Mm. Um, I went crab hunting, I went uh, fruit plucking. We didn't know it was almond until later. <laughs> it's probably fruit. <laughs> fruit. <laughs> fruit. <laughs> uh, I, yes, and I went a la bonbon catching. I don't know if What's you know that? Some of them will know that? that. So it's a beetle <laughs> that flies. You just get a little string tied around and the and neck. And that was my and toy. So and, are and animal is they, don't, okay. they don't know these things. When you had toys, Ala Bonbon was my toy. <laughs> <laughs> I used to house it in a matchbox. You know, you, you, know, you punch holes in it and you feed it with leaves uh, and stuff. The games you played, for me, it was a playing station. Uh, Agbalumo seeds. <laughs> <laughs> you asked for my background. Yeah, I'll reveal you. I, I'm enjoying it. Um, I did tenter with the girls. And some of the girls played football with us, but I wasn't good with football, so I had too many injuries. And my mom used hot water on me a lot. Oh, yes, I had lice in my hair, in my hair, and my mom had to scrape my hair at some point. So it was pretty much um, a noble, regular background. You know, I, I grew up in a place where there was so much diversity. I, I didn't know religion or ethnicity, actually. Morocco had everybody. I could speak Ijo at one time because my neighbors were Ijo. I could pick Calabar, Efik at some point because we had everybody around us and sometimes uh, spent quite some time at Onimalu with the Hausa guys. It's now that I know that Nigeria has different, but back then as a kid I didn't know. Mm -hmm. So it was quite good. I, I grew up well, yeah. Mm, that's good. So. I could actually just listen to you all day. There's <laughs> a way you, you also speak uh, and I think it comes from experience, comes from wisdom, uh, the way you string together your words. I'm not analyzing your speech, <laughs> but... I could listen to you all day, and it just speaks to the quality 
that you have in you, the creativity. No, so it's a no-brainer that you are who you are today. But tell us, where have you been? Because there are people asking, oh, what? I mean, we used to see Kofi. Kofi used to do music, do comedy, do shows. Uh, you almost could not avoid him. You turn on your TV, you see Kofi. You turn it off, <laughs> go to a show, you see Kofi. Ah, you watch movies, there's, there's Kofi. But right now, they don't see you as much. So what, what's going on? Uh, I, I think you need to understand growth for every person. There's a point you get to, you need to know that you've achieved certain things and you shouldn't run the race like, uh, you know, we're talking, I'm 47. So if I'm still doing what I was doing 20 years ago, then it means I'm not growing. Mm. So I'm caught up in my blessings and doing it the way I should do it at this stage. Say yeah. that again. You're caught I'm up? caught up in my blessings. You know, mm. when somebody looks up to you and they are chasing what you were chasing and you're still chasing those same things, they will surpass you. So recognize your blessings and be in it. So as we speak, if you're following me, you'll see everything I'm doing. But if you're not following me, you will not see it. That means you are not totally into me. The people who give me business don't need my social media handle to give me business. But we're in an age where people need validation from thought factors that do not even add value. You know, most of the followers we have online are actually looking for what they can get from us. They do not actually add to us. So I don't need to validate constantly for those people. And then when we're coming up, the platforms we had were quite a few. Now it's so vast and tuned to a more younger generation. As we speak, I just released a new music video for Flex, one of my songs. It will play on certain platforms. Certain platforms that cater to a certain demographic will not play that video because what they want to showcase is not what I am portraying. I am a family brand. So sometimes when we send out our music videos, they'll say it doesn't have, you can't find me at this age smoking in videos, showing off body parts and all that. I'm too old for that. You're caught up in your blessing. Yes, because I have a family and an image to project to my kids. My daughter is in SS2, going to SS3. My son is his uh, class captain. You know, <laughs> my, so they are exemplary figures in their own space. So if peradventure I mess up on my own grind, it will backtrack to them. Yeah. They will be the laughing stock in their school environment. So at this point in my career, I have to protect them first, above my own needs. They are my focus now, so whatever I do. So I will not want to propagate my brand through scandals or all those things that is now the new norm, constantly in people's faces with anything that is ridiculous and not necessary. That is the new drive and the new vibe. I am not that person. So I still do the job, I do the work. If you need it, you'll see it. Mm. Till date. Between 2018 and as we speak, I've done 25 movies without a loan from anybody. 25? Wow. Yes, I have 34 music albums, and I'm releasing another one soon for Ashney. So I constantly do the work. I have done two books. I'm the only entertainer who has quite um, a repertoire that nobody has. I have the highest albums. number of music videos, highest movies done by any stand-up comedian in Nigeria. Uh, all these things are there. If you check, you'll find oh, it. Oh, absolutely. But people like noise, and I'm not the noise. You see, I'm still my mother's son. So I must maintain that discipline and principle because it would... How am I going to sit in front of the family and try and defend any errors I make? Because mm. I am the yardstick for the next ones coming that they'll say, okay, Uncle Kofi did it well, so you have permission to go and do it. If I don't do it right, no one else in my family in the coming generations will be permitted to do it. Kunle Afalanya is doing what he's doing because somebody set the stage for him. So that, I'm the first of everything in my family. The okay. first of your name? First of everything. I'm the first born, I'm the head of the family, I'm the Lori B. I am, you know, so I am an antecedent to a lot. I'm a forerunner, so I have to be careful what I put on ground. So if you see some of my colleagues still jumping up and down trying to impress people, ah, nah, 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 ah. See, I don't 
If there's any new thing anybody is doing right now, go check my pedigree. I have done, done it. it. I've done it. A lot, there, of done the, that. a lot of the things. So, that so, <laughs> so some people may be, I guess, okay, if you choose to follow this part, are you yeah. making as, as much money as you should be able to make to fund the things you're funding? Oh, God, I argument. said between 2018 and now, I've shot 25 movies without taking a loan. If I'm not making money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kofi, well, let's... So, uh, you see, the thing is, people believe that it is when you, when you see someone all over the place that mm. they are making money. I'm actually making more money than when I was all over the place trying to create an image. So once you create the image, you create the brand, Gary doesn't advertise itself. Mm. It sells. We don't come yeah. up from noodle stage. We don't do Gary stage. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk so, about your own... Oh, okay. No, go ahead. Um, the song, the music aspect, so the music yeah. side of you. I recall last year you said techno created Afrobeats. No, 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 no. Which means, no. okay, do you want to you clear see, that? There's, there's always a misquote to a narrative. Mm. Techno is the one that created the new bounce in the Afrobeats. Afro okay, that you I just know. wanted you to clear that. Prior to that, rap music used to be the only source of music that sampled other sounds into it. Our songs from way back wasn't doing that. It was techno that started infusing all those elements of okay. sampling, uh, crash, or it, it, some sort of infusion that used to be in hip hop, not in Afro beats. Mm. So he was the one that gave, if you listen to Pana, there were certain elements that he put into it and the bounces and then everybody heard that and started doing the same things in different ways. So he was the one that brought that new groove what he did with Pana and some other songs he did at the time, Jay Martins was doing it the high life way mm. prior, but techno took it a step further and then every young person followed. Mind you, it was the same techno that now wrote some of the new songs that Davido used to blow up at the time. Mm. So yeah. it was the one constantly giving every other person ideas on how to go with it. Okay. So that was what I said. And but trust they took it out of context. Ah, yeah. They would always, <laughs> that's why. That's one other reason why you don't see me all over the place anymore. I don't, I, I can't withstand the toxicity. It, it, it I cringe at it. So like there's how, a lot of toxicity. Yeah, how did we get here? How do we have too many ignorant people being the ones at the fore? And you know, in that space of social media where a few enlightened people are supposed to rub off on you, the ignorant ones drown and discourage us from interacting constantly. That, so that, we pull that, back. Kofi, that is the argument now. People like you hold certain values and very yeah. strong values. People are saying you should actually show up as much as possible because the man who shows up that is counted most of the time. Mm. So there's a proliferation of quote unquote this characters that we are concerned about. Let me use a civil language. I'll tell you mm. why people like myself keep pulling back. Uh, this is the first time I'm going to say this. In a society, in a system that has no structure to celebrate value, you are always going to be swimming against the tides. Here I am, I have to struggle for sponsorship every time. Corporate Nigeria does not exactly want valuable brands. They just want people who will bring numbers, no matter how junky it is. So if we have a system where people like myself are constantly at the pedestal, are the ones that take for instance you go you drive around town and you see billboards of joker silver alibaba all the veterans constantly do you know that young people will pick up on that i'm like it means i should keep working to the point where as i get older i get more appreciated but nigeria is a system where the older you get the more experience you have the more they throw you out of the system so young people feel it is now so there's no way my values can rub off on young people if I'm not constantly being pushed in their presence. Like I just said, I'll send out a new video and you tell me that my video does not hold what you want to sell to young people. So why do I need to go into that space and try to correct young people who have a different mindset and then they constantly insult me? Why do I want to interact in that space? When for every time I say something, it is taken out of context. You know, I have a family that mental health is no longer a joke. For every time they get to see negative energy, there's a way they will feel. You know, there's the respect they give you at home. Mm -hmm. But if they see that outsiders are disrespecting you, they'll feel somehow withdrawn as well. So before it gets to that point, 
I have to kaku. Say, ah, come. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's, there's this debate then that comes in, pardon me. So obviously there's a market for those uh, people or the products that is sell. Exactly. There's a big market for it. Funny, it, funny thing is, half the time, the numbers they chase does not ever translate. To money? Ah, trust me, half the time. That's why you see that almost every time they make ambassadors, they always fall short and something goes wrong and they drop the ambassador. But the challenge then is, and this is a debate, I'm glad we're talking about this. So there's, there's some who believe, are you guys who are some sort of oligopoly? So there are a few people controlling the market at that time. We didn't have social media, it was just television. And I imagine TV stations would want to play your music. Ah, Kofi's music is out yeah. with Sound Sultan or this person. Put it there on rotation and the rest. And these younger ones didn't have that opportunity. No, then no, social no, no. media no, came. No, 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 pardon me, let me just land. Okay, fine. Because as a thinking, then okay, social man. media came and it just democratized things. So they didn't have to know anybody in a TV station or a radio station. They could put their material on social media and it would go viral. So attention sort of shifted, or at least they were able to enter the market that they thought was being gate kept. <laughs> you are the gatekeepers. Keepers. So to some, <laughs> no, I'm just saying. So to some extent, that democratizes. So they always feel that, aren't you feeling like the smartest person in the room? We like Pangolo music. We like Lewid content. Let us enjoy our Lewid content and stuff. So what do you say to that? I like your landing. Do you think there's value in a lot of the things that they enjoy now as against when we were young people? Mm. Do you think there's value in some of the things? Because half the time, I see people approach and be like, ah, nah, the way we want to do comedy that time, now, all this one that they are talking about, their skits are all just showing soft porn and all that. We weren't great creepers per se. We were also in a democracy. We, we started blooming from after 99. And everybody was given same access. If you had content that people liked, they would play you. If you check at that time, the same way they were playing Aroma, they were playing Oya O, Jukpa, Jukpa. They were playing some sort of, you know, but it appealed to a certain demographic, you know. <laughs> it was in this same country that some people say, I wait until Reggie, they sing self at the time. Right. And we, we have a portable in this day and time. So it wasn't like there was a screening off of certain people. It was just that there was limited avenue to express. Social media just made it more open. Mm -hmm. The fans now decide. It gave power to the fans, not the entertainers. At the time, it was the entertainers and the platforms, limited platforms that de decided Mm. What, but now the fans decide what they and I like that part of it that it is the fans mm. yeah, that right. decide what they want. If okay. they like what you are doing, they will come. If they don't like your own, it's not that there is a system oh, yeah. pushing out. You know. Yeah, so. yeah. I, I wish we had. I wish we had a lot of time because we're Coffee planning you yeah, give yeah, us yeah. some comedy skits no, you know, and you know, songs really and I all believe, that. I personally so. believe that <laughs> to you, for you to be a comedian. You must be an intelligentsia. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, 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 I totally believe it. I've seen, well, it's And for, and for it's, Kofi, who is a comedian, actor, <laughs> and a singer, I mean, that's, that's double, I mean, triple threat. Like that is something I'll But thank you. <laughs> Uh, More than uh, what's going on. I, <laughs> don't worry, you come back. You come back on the show, and you have to sing for us. Come Maybe give us some new cast. No, I have all, all the old cast and new cast. I, 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 I have the biggest about report this fashion brand, though. Oh, that, that's my merchandise uh, as well. Oh, so. Okay, guru. Anyway, thank you very much, oh, Kofi, the guru. Thank, thank you. you so much for coming on the morning brief. It's been very it, exciting. It was, it was very brief. I'd like to have you again. <laughs> that's what it we're was really brief. You. No, you started by saying it should be brief, so yeah. we make it brief for you. Nice. Anyway, Thanks for thank you. Me. Thanks so thank you. much. Thanks. So. All right, guys. Uh, we're going to Paris 2024 Olympics, but not now. Don't worry. <laughs> we'll talk about that in just a moment when we come back. So don't go anywhere. Stay with us.